Hello, friends. How are you? I am so uh, great, uh, so uh, pleased to be with you guys today. Um, I brought a little story I'd like to share with you. Is that okay? It's a book that I wrote a number of years ago, and it reminds me, um, well, the story came from when I was a boy. I don't know if you remember this. It's, if anyone's ever been in a car with their parents driving and you, you were like a little kid and you're in the back seat. Now, when I was a kid, they threw us into the back seat and there were no seat belts, no bucket seats or nothing. It was just a bench seat. And we just bounced around back there and uh, <laughs> we're still alive to tell about it. But uh, nonetheless, my view from the back seat window of that car was of the night sky. And I could see the stars going by and the light poles just whizzing by with the electrical wires on them, you know, dipping by. And uh, I also saw the moon. And I would watch that moon and I'd keep my eyes on it because it was the biggest, brightest thing in the sky. But I noticed the movement of the car and I noticed that whenever we turned the corner, the moon was still there. Then we drive over by Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen, and the moon was still there. We go past the library, past the school, past the post office, everywhere we went, the moon was still there. I don't know if you remember that. It's like the moon is following you or something. Who remembers that? Raise your hand. Oh, great. Well, I wrote this story about a little boy and his grandpa, and it centers around this tag along moon. So I'm going to see if we can switch over and I'll share it with you right now. So, Max and the tag along moon. One night, as Max was leaving grandpa's house, he reached up to give grandpa a big hug goodbye. In the sky behind Grandpa appeared a big, fine moon. Look, Grandpa, the moon. That old moon will always shine for you, on and on. Grandpa and Max gazed quietly at the big moon together as it embraced them in soft, yellow light. Max smiled at the moon and Grandpa then climbed into the car. Bye-bye, Grandpa. Bye-bye, moon. As the car pulled away, Max kept his eyes on Grandpa until he disappeared from sight and all he saw was the moon. Max kept his eyes on that moon, waiting for it to disappear too. The long ride home was swervy, curvy, this way and that, all the way, and the moon seemed to tag along. <laughs> Max giggled as he watched that beautiful bright orb flicker through the passing trees, trailing behind the car as it traveled home, this way and that, playing peekaboo. Up a hill, down a hill, the moon was ever there. Over a bridge, around a curve, the moon bounced along. Around a tree, past a field of sleeping cows, the moon stayed quietly behind Max. Through a small town with roundabout streets, Max gazed as the moon kept up. At the mouth of a tunnel and out the other end, Max smiled when he saw the moon there, waiting. Dark clouds tumbled across the night sky. The stars and nightingales all faded away. Max searched the darkness and wondered, where's the moon? Where did it go? Grandpa said it would always shine for me. Finally home, Max took one last look up at that empty sky. I guess that old moon couldn't shine for me all the way home. Upstairs, in bed, the room was dark. Max felt alone. He missed Grandpa. He missed that tag along moon. Then slowly, very slowly, Max's bedroom began to fill with a soft yellow glow. The clouds faded away and the moon peeked through. Max gazed up at that magic ball of light and thought about what Grandpa said. That old moon will always shine for me, on and on. Max knew then that whenever he saw the moon, he would think of Grandpa, on and on. And he slept soundly, embraced in a soft, yellow light. Good night, Max. Good night, moon. Bye now. Sorry about the difficulties, but we'll have to do it again sometime. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs>
Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.